This is the grade eight math practice test for T and ready. Question number, at least this test version anyway, 18. Which equation represents a linear function? Now, linear function should be near and dear to your heart at this point. Anytime I see linear or line, I always write this, even if I don't need it. I like slope intercept form because um, it helps me develop my thought processes. Now, if I look at this form, the thing I notice about it is it's x to the first power, even though I don't necessarily um, see the one, it's assumed. The thing about a linear function is that the change is based on a constant rate of change. So if it goes up by two, it goes up by two every time. So you'll have the same amount of change over and over and over again. The thing about x squared, for instance, because you're changing the nature of your input. Like if I plug in a four here, it's always four. If I plug in a five here, it's always five. It's just getting multiplied by the slope and added to the intercept. X squared changes everything. If I put a four in here, it's four times four, it immediately becomes 16. If I put in a five, it becomes 25. Those numbers aren't equally apart. If I do six, it's 36. The numbers jump a lot. Um, so when I look for a linear function, what I'm really looking for is X to the first power. So that's all I'm going to look for in these. I'm just going to look to see what the x is doing. For a, I need to multiply by both terms. So this and this. x times 2 is just 2x. But the problem is, this is the 3 stays the same, but then I have x times x. And if I have x to the first times x to the first... If I'm multiplying the terms, I add the exponents, so x squared. So this is 3x squared, so not linear. Nope, you're out. Um, b, 1 half times x minus 3, or yeah, it's minus 3 times 1 half, which is minus 3 halves. And then I'll just minus 2x this thing. Now I can combine these terms, and it's going to give me negative... 3 halves or negative 1 and a half x minus 3 and a half. And it doesn't have to be this eloquent. All you have to really see is it's just x to the first power. That's it. I never multiplied a term with x times another term because the relationship was only a subtraction. And this 1 half doesn't have an x on it. So I'm working with a linear function. So the answer number 18 is b. Let's check through the other answers anyway. This one automatically is out because it comes with x squared. So you're out. And this one, 1 half x times 2x. 1 half times 2 gives you 1. x times x, again, just like I did here, gives me x squared. And that'd be plus 3. But it doesn't actually really... Oh, and then I have to do 1 half x minus 1, so it'd be minus 1 half x. But it doesn't actually matter because this ruins it. I'm not actually trying to work them all the way out. I'm just trying to find a linear function. So when you have a linear function question, work all the uh, distributive properties out because that's usually what they do. Combine like terms in appropriate ways. But all you're really looking for is do you already have an x squared uh, or some other form where like if x is the exponent, then obviously that's not linear. Um, what's going on with the x? Do you have any singular linear terms? And that's the only uh, term that you have Then you're in good shape. So it didn't even matter if I couldn't do the one half times negative three, it's an irrelevance. I mean, it gives me this, but it doesn't actually matter. The only thing that really mattered to me was that this was the next term, and this was the next term, and the relationship was subtraction instead of multiply. So that's it. Look for x when you look for linear.